Yep, a little evolution. Uh, rather than Nimble Mongoose and Tarmogoyf, it uses White for Geist of St. Traft and Stoneforge Mystic as its threat base. Yeah, and he's going to be playing against David Dobarin, who was our runner-up this morning. He is playing a Dark Maverick list. He Basically, the black is just for the activation on Gaddock Teague, but kind of a throw to the past. Maverick's a deck we've seen... Oh, and three thought seeds. So this is a deck that uh, we have seen kind of fall out of favor and then start to slowly creep its way back into the meta. Yeah, you know, green-white hate bears. Kind of kind of hard to keep, keep the hate bears down. Um, you know, anybody who just wants to target specific decks and make complicated game states and give the opponent fits, hate bears is always going to be around to do exactly that. And one of the reasons this architect is, archetype is viable is because of this opening play that David makes. It is a fetch land into a turn one Mother of Runes. Yep, Mother of Runes, one of the more annoying cards in Magic history. <laughs> Quite annoying, uh, very difficult to deal with. Once it gets active, it can protect itself as well as the other creatures from removal, from blockers, from attackers, from anything. Yeah. So while Mother Runes is in play, the uh, turn two Kasali Pride Mage from Doban is going to go ahead and eat a daze. Be Wheeler picks up his own Volcanic Island to counter the spell. Mother does not like to attack. No, so really... She's a pacifist. She just never... N she almost just, never does. Maybe the second copy of her attacks sometimes. Yeah, no, she likes to sit not. there with her mug of coffee, drinking, looking over her children. So right now we just kind of have... Uh, the Mavericks not hasn't landed a threat yet, but no pressure from the Delver deck as Doban will make his third land and then cast Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, big part of what the blue-white-red Delver deck needs to do is land a huge threat and then play this uh, sort of aggro-controlling role. Without the threat out, um, it's unlikely that the Delver deck is going to be able to run the Maverick deck out of threats. Uh, usually you want to run them out of threats just long enough to kill them, but without that threat, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Yeah, so what's going to happen is that Benjamin Wheeler is going to have to play from behind a little bit here, which is not, which can be difficult for Maverick to do. We see a stifle on the come into play ability for Stoneforge Mystic. Tobarin had the equipment already in Umazawa's Jite, but the Jite was dazed, leaving Tobarin with just two cards in his hand. Yeah, uh, very easily could have um, taken the turn back and used Stoneforge Mystic's ability to make the Umazawa's Jite uncounterable on the turn uh, after, but chose to run it out there and ends up getting punished with a daze. Yeah. Well, we will see just how much more counter magic Wheeler has. Uh, David is going to go now for a real size threat in Knight of the Reliquary. Knight of the Reliquary, uh, quite big and gets bigger. And now that it's landed with Mother of Runes protecting it, it's going to be a tough race for uh, this lone Delver of Secrets. And Knight of the Reliquary ends up getting very big. We are going to see a Delver Secrets flip off swords to plowshares. But remember, he's going to need two kill spells to deal with that Knight of the Reliquary. Yep. Mother of Runes does not like <laughs> her children being, pla being plowed away. And if you haven't seen how the pressure is applied from Dark Maverick, or just Maverick decks in general, despite the fact that neither Reliquary is going to be a very large creature, it generally turns into, I believe in the situation, a Wasteland machine. Yes. Lock them out while, you know, the Stoneforge Mystic and the Dryad Arbor attack for one apiece. Especially potent as Delver only plays six actual mana lands, and they are all non-basics, typically. Yep. So we see a Brainstorm from Wheeler. He's going to go ahead and put two back. Then he Jataxian Probes, finding out that Dobarin's last card is a Maze of Ith. Making this race even more difficult. Yeah, so he's going to... Is it fair to say he's going to have to try to run Dobarin out of threats? He's going to need to somehow get this Knight of the Reliquary off the table very quickly. Yep, it, it looks very likely that he's going to have to end up 2 forwarding himself to take out the Mother and then deal with each individual threat as it comes. Uh, as this race is not favorable for Benjamin Wheeler. And in a wasteland naturally drawn by Dobarn. So that will speed up the wastelanding clock that Knight of the Reliquary presents. Yep, Knight of the Reliquary growing by the minute. Only two forests slash plains with Cradle and Caracas not being able to find wastelands. But we're going to see Doban start to get aggressive here. He turns the Dryad Arbor sideways, debating, puts Stoneforge Mystic in there, and now he's on the attack, putting Wheeler down to 15. Yep, and 
this is, uh, you can see the story of this game in the number of permanents. We have a land and an insectile aberration versus four creatures and three slash four lands. All right, so we are going to see an end step fetch here by Wheeler. Remember, this is about, he's going to get to use this mana just about once before yeah. Dobaren takes it away. It's going to be for Volcanic Island. So remember, we know he has that sword, well, he had the sword to plowshares before he brainstormed. Right. We don't know if he chose to, cap, to keep it. And it looks like Dobaren's going to let him untap with the Volcanic Island. Yep. Don't want to run your wasteland into a stifle. Wait until he uses the mana and then go for the wasteland. Uh, not too afraid of one use. All right, and the race continues. Insectile Aberration puts Dobaren down to 13. So Wheeler's still keeping pace at the moment, but is rapidly falling behind. And now we see exactly that. The Wasteland Machine is underway. Yeah, so Knight of the Relicor's ability to search out another land means that he can sacrifice this savanna to go ahead and get additional copies of Wasteland, which is what he'll do. Or possibly in this case, he has another option where he can get Horizon Canopy. Yeah, draw a card. <laughs> it's reasonable. I think I prefer locking out the Delver player, just Wasteland Machine, but, you know, drawing cards never hurt. Yeah, so it basically taps the, because he can float the mana from Savannah ahead of time, that actually just lets him sack, basically stack his Savannah to draw a card. Yep. And now the Brainstorm resolves, and Benjamin Wheeler's gonna have to sculpt a game plan here. Versus an ever-growing Knight of the Reliquary, Mother of Ruins Protection, and two other little dorks chipping away at his life total. All right, so second land on the table for Wheeler. It's going to be a Scalding Tarn. Now he'll join Dobaren down at 13. Shuffle away those two that he didn't want from the Brainstorm. Looks like a couple of lands. Yeah, and now he has all his colors online as he has gotten Tundra for the turn. So even though uh, David chose to get Horizon Canopy on that one turn, that does not lock him into anything. He can still get a uh, Wasteland train going at any point. So Benjamin Wheeler is very much, uh, you know, taxed in that he has to use his mana as effectively as possible. Yeah. Wheeler currently building toward the late game. He sets up his draw there with a Ponder, keeps all three on top and takes one of the cards. So right now he's still at pace and he's still even at 13 but he's very far behind on the board, and as you mentioned, racing will become a lot harder as David drops Maze of If. Yep, Maze of If, gonna be able to stop that insectile apparition beating in the air, and Night of the Reliquary, uh, I was about to say, Night of the Reliquary tricks also uh, a viable option here. What you can do is actually, after damage, use it on your own creature, untapping the Knight of the Reliquary so that it gets to both attack and use its ability. Yeah, and he's gonna do just that. He, so he deals the damage with the Knight, untaps it to go find a Wasteland, and Wastelands the Tundra, bringing Wheeler back down to one mana, but more importantly, bringing him to five life. Yep, facing lethal, and <laughs> the big finish, the, the birds, big, of, the paradise. birds <laughs> of paradise. Which is actually a blocker here, to yeah. be fair. But uh, Wheeler, you know, 13 to five, now down pretty big in the race and only with a 3-2 in play is gonna have a real hard time dealing enough damage to make this work. Yep. And he's gonna start searching with a Ponder. Ponder a little dirtily, you know, is much prefer to uh, use that mana on something that can get him back to something resembling parity on board. But instead, he's gonna have to shuffle and draw a random card. All right. Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah, Grim Lava Mancer. Would have been a great play earlier in the game. Right now, it seems like it's a little, it's a little late to the show. Yep. Definitely a good card in this matchup, but uh, not when you're this far behind. And we see here, we are contemplating if he has any options. He can swing for free, but he's wondering if, if there's any way that he can actually stop this attack next turn. Yeah, I mean, you have to get multiple colors of creatures in play to be able to chump lock the Knight of the Reliquary, untap and use your mana effectively to use two removal spells on it. Seems like your only way out. Wheeler's down to four, finding his last copy of Volcanic Island. And that'll be for the Grim Lava Mancer he drew. Yep. 
And now it looks like the insectile aberration is staying home. He does have what you said though. He has made a both red creature and a and a blue creature. So he can he will be able to chump block the Knight of the Reliquary, it looks like. Yep. You know, but where does he go from there once he has the chump block? That that is the question. He he is still uh very much under the gun. He's gonna have to have a pretty uh, impressive next turn. All right, so it's just Night of the Reliquary being sent. We have a two wastelands, two fetch lands. We have enough lands. This I think he's a seven-seven right now. Either way, he's very lethal, and he takes down the Delver of Secrets. Yep. Interesting choice not to maze of if the Night of the Reliquary there. Not likely to matter, but. Yeah, so there's, the, there's that window after the damage where he can maze the Knight of the Reliquary. Right. And a second Mother of Runes for Dobarn means that blocking will be almost impossible for Wheeler here. He would need three colors of creatures, which his deck can provide. So it's going to start with easy. Lava Mancer on the active Mother of Runes. All right, so she's going to go ahead and tap, give herself Pro Red. Then you have to... Source the Plowshares, the Knight of the Reliquary. And then hopefully, for his sake, also kill He's a Mother of Runes while you can. He's going to source the Knight of the Reliquary. So, I don't believe, had the Knight of the Reliquary been untapped, I don't, I've seen a couple Maverick lists play Sejiri Step as a possible target for it. I do not believe that's in... No, that is not in Doburn's list. So no, there's, it, there's no way for it to protect itself using his ability. Correct. It, if none of the Reliquary were active, it simply would have gotten a Wasteland and choked uh, Benjamin Wheeler on this turn to prevent, you know... If Benjamin Wheeler did have a Lightning Bolt also, um, he wouldn't have been able to cast it, but this way he would. Yeah, when you think of the utility lands for Knight in the Maverick decks, it typically is a Cradle, a Caracas, a Maze... And then, and three, or then three or four wastelands. Four wastelands. Yeah, he has three, so okay. exactly. And two horizon canopies. I guess would be the last utility he can find. Value. Yeah. You know. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you just gotta draw a card. All right, and this is almost. I like how this is almost a lethal swing here. He has three power on the battlefield. <laughs> Does not have the fourth, so he's gonna have to. It's amazing that, you know, a format where all the most powerful cards in the history of Magic the Gathering are available, and we're looking at uh, a 1-1, one, one, a 1-1, one, one, and a 1-2 facing down a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, really, the telling part about Legacy, I think, is that not so much the size of the creatures, but if you look at the mana cost of the creatures on the board. Yes. We have 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 and 2. So. so this looks like a cradle-powered Green Sun Zenith. This is probably Sigarda, which will end... Uh, ends the game instantly. Yep, there this we a, go. This is a Zenith for five. So Sigarda, Host of Hands, is a one of in the Maverick deck that is meant to be its end-all finisher where Knight of the Reliquary can be vulnerable. Right. Uh, it's for really removal-heavy decks such as uh, Shardless Bug and... Uh, oh, it looks like he Grim Lava Mastered himself there. Uh, and Jund. Jund is the other big one for Sigarda. All right, so Doburn takes down the first game over Benjamin Wheeler. Hate bears, hate. And really what we saw there, I also say is that Wheeler did not land a relevant threat on turn one. He was on the draw, and as a result, he just fell a little far behind. Yep, he didn't have the answer for the turn one mother, which made uh, his all of his subsequent cards a lot worse, and he spent a couple of key turns or key pieces of mana doing things like pondering and brainstorming. He didn't already have those things set up, and um, that com was compounded by the fact that he was being choked on mana by the Wasteland Machine. And uh, yeah, David's deck did exactly what it's supposed to. Yeah, so originally, so blue-white Delver, blue-white red Delver out of the board for this matchup. Why don't we go ahead and look at what it has here. The Blue White Red Delver deck is going to board some removal. It's going to take a little more of a controlling stance, uh, which it can do because it has things like Brainstorm, where the Maverick deck does not. So we're looking at two Pyroclasm, the fourth Swords to Plowshares, a couple of Submerges, and an Engineered Explosives, as well as a Sword of Feast and Famine for the uh, Stoneforge Mystic Package probably coming in and a wear tear for David's uh, artifacts and enchantments and 
you know, equipments and whatnot. Yeah, so here's that package. I've noticed that he's actually running Pyroclasm over Rough Tumble, which is generally the Pyroclasm variant you see in in Delver decks. Is that a specific choice here, or is that kind of a change in the meta? Yeah, it just depends on, you know, how you think you're going to be using him. Rough Tumble uh, does not kill your own Delvers, but it also doesn't kill opposing Birds of Paradise or opposing Delvers. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of differences. Uh, you're never really going to tumble, so they're... Right, it's a, yeah, it's actually just a pyroclasm for non-flyers. Right, so it's uh, it's just a matter of whether you think uh, you're going to be in situations where you really need to not kill your own flyer versus how many times you're going to need to kill your opponent's flyer. Very small choice, but it, it you are correct in that, you know, that is a, a point of contention between these, uh, these different builds. A lot of people prefer Rough Tumble, but I've seen pyroclasms and I've heard good arguments for both sides. Yeah, a little bit what's interesting on Benjamin's deck list is I'm noticing it's it's shaved down on some of the staples of the deck. Right now he has he has only three staples, for example. Um, he's playing three Force of Will, which I think is somewhat standard. Yep, yeah, yeah, shaving Force of Wills uh, has been a thing for quite a while in Legacy. You know, two for one yourself, no matter how efficient it is mana-wise, uh, is never a good thing. And really only, like, super strong against combo, so... Cutting Force of Will, or cutting a Force of Will and moving it to the sideboard, that's that's pretty standard. Three Stifle is interesting. Stifle to me feels like a four or zero card. It's like either you're on the Mana Denial plan or you're not on the Mana Denial plan. Exactly. Either you want, you know, to have multiple Stifles and really shut them down off of all their lands and follow it up with Wastelands, or you don't want to, you know, worry about holding up mana for Stifle, and then you don't want to draw them late because they're not so good late. Well, in this matchup, is this even a matchup where he keeps in the Stifle package? I would imagine not. It does have a couple of applications. Um, it can stop a Kasali Pride Mage from killing a piece of equipment, and it can also stop a Stoneforge Mystic from get fetching a piece of equipment. Um, it also prevents uh, Wasteland activation on Benjamin Wheeler's lands, so it does have its applications. Um, I, I would say that he keeps them in, but it is interesting that he is only playing three. Like, Stifle for value is sort of a thing, right? Like, against, say, a Gristlebrand activation. Absolutely, Stifle's excellent. You're being that, able to stifle that. seven cards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, even if you're above 15, stifling the Annihilator trigger on a sneak attacked Emrakul. Um, you know, th there are those other applications, and stifling, I would say that stifling a Solid Pride Mage or a Stoneforge Mystic are two more of those uh, uses, but I would think that the main use from a design deck design perspective would be to uh, use it as a stone rain. All right, so this game's going to be a little, it's going to be a different pace game, as this time we have Wheeler on the play, and he has a turn one play with Delver of Secrets. Absolutely huge. This is, this is step one on uh, the path for the Delver deck. All right, Dobarin, though, has a good response in Deathrite Shaman. Uh, Wheeler naturally flips Delver off of Swords to Plowshares. That's step two. That's step two, flip the, <laughs> flip the Delver. Yeah, step three is going to come in the attack step. <laughs> All right. And we see a Jataxian probe. It's going to be Thoughtseize, Mother of Runes, Abrupt Decay, Thalia, Green Sun Zenith, and Dryad Arbor. Pretty interesting hand, pretty um, spread out hand, you know, quite varied. It, to me, it seems land light. This, if David loses this Deathrite Shaman, that could be really bad for him. Yeah, and even if he weren't to, lo to lose it, like... He can't actually make mana. Yeah, if, if Benjamin Wheeler were to just not use a fetch land, uh, it, would, it would look a little, uh, a little sheepish. That's what we're going to see. Wheeler fouls up with the Tundra and just passes the turn. Surprised to not see a Swords to Plowshares there. Suppose that uh, he's holding it for the Mother of Runes. Once, you know, you want your first removal spell to hit Mother so that the, your subsequent removal spells actually work. Yeah, we see the Dryad Arbor, but remember, because it's also a creature, it can't tap for mana this turn. And so we're going to see a hit for three, putting the Baron down to 14. He will gain life off the Swords to Plowshares. Yep. On... But Wheeler going for the full mana denial package here, waste landing away the Dryad Arbor after he killed the Stoneforge Mystic. Really strong. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you're gonna ponder, you want to do it first, get your most information. But I'm pretty sure that this turn was fairly mapped out for Benjamin. 
uh, you know, taking out two mana sources against the land light opponent while having a clock and a strong hands. That is that is the ideal situation for the blue white red Delver yeah, deck. He actually knows that Dobrin doesn't have another land, or didn't have another land. Dobrin actually got to draw one this turn, so he'll he's not locked out of the game. He's gonna fetch immediately. He's be able to get get his land around Stifle, and now he has kind of a choice of. Of place here. We know he has a turn two Thalia. He also has a gr possibility to green Sun Zenith for a one. He's, he's definitely on the back foot. He is. I think that step one is actually going to be the abrupt decay here, it looks like. Um, that is a little unfortunate for him that he's going to have to fetch out a black source here and still strand those white cards in his hand. But you can abrupt decay this turn, green Sun Zenith for, um, say, a Deathrite Shaman next turn, and then have access to white after that. Or vice versa, that works as well. Yeah, so he just needs to preserve his life total. Yeah. yeah Delver is, is definitely one of those get, make decks that makes one or two threats and then rides that threat for the whole game. Absolutely. It's like a, a protect the queen sort of strategy. Yep. Good old, good old counter slivers. Yeah. What, what year is it? <laughs> but this, this is still a thing that we're doing? <laughs> I remember, what is it, cards like Abrupt Decay. So Delver, at that time it was Rug Delver, was kind of the king of the format for a while, and it was really cards like Abrupt Decay that kind of pushed it off the top of the metagame. For exactly that reason. I mean, it takes one threat and protects it and rides it, but you can't protect it from an Abrupt Decay, yeah. unless it's a Nimble Mongoose. Then it protects itself. Then it protects itself. Yeah. That guy's, that guy's a slippery uh, little mongoose. All right, so we see at, he, after fetching the, the Bayou, he actually gets is going to Green Sun for one. And it looks like that the plan is to set up his mana base hard more so that he can cast multiple spells on the following turns. Makes sense. It's going to cost him three life, though. So another Frenchman will get at least one more Delver hit. This is true. He also chooses to get uh, a Birds of Paradise rather than a Deathrite Shaman. Interesting choice. All right, so Jataxian Probe shows the rest of Dobaran's hand. It is a lot of three white cards. Stoneforge Mystic, Mother of Runes, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. And then two black cards, the Abrupt Decay we knew about, and the Thought Seize that he has drawn. And the Thought Seize extra side. Thought Seize is also in the opener, so yep. most things we knew about. And here comes the Sectile Aberration, hitting David down to 11. Now, if you have a removal spell, do you bolt the birds, as they say? Bolt the elf. My guess would have to be yes here. Too. Yeah, cutting off the white and the third mana both seems so good. Yeah, once you... St in the Delver deck... Once you basically it seems to me that you want to deny mana as long as you think that's a winnable fight. You know, once your opponent has four mana in play, then then the mana deny, denial strategy's off. Right. But Instead, we, we see a Geist of Saint Traft, pretty sizable threat here. Yeah, that's a pretty decent play on its own. It does mean that Doburn can make a card like Gar like Thalia to attempt to block the Geist of Saint Traft. Yeah, we could see. Something like Thought Seize into Thalia here. We could see Abrupt Decay Thalia. Yeah, Doburn actually did draw Fetchland for the turn, so now he has the ability to play multiple spells in a turn. Which is pretty important uh, at this juncture, as he's been choked down to zero things a turn for a while there. So he's got to catch up a bit. Looks like he's actually looking at that Stoneforge Mystic. I wouldn't... I wouldn't fault him if he tried to go Stoneforge Mystic Thalia here. All right, and he's going to start on exactly that, Stoneforge Mystic. I actually think that you lead with Thalia here so that your second spell doesn't get dazed. Yeah, the Thalia could get dazed. That's... And if Thalia gets dazed, then he has no profitable blocks on the guys that's in Traft, and that would be devastating. All right, and he's going to go ahead and let's say, grab Batter Skull off the Stoneforge Mystic. And then while he's in the deck, he's going to go ahead and crack the fetch land to find a white source. So, Doburn starting to get onto the board. Will it be soon? And did he get there soon enough, though, is the question. Yep. Life total a little low, under a lot of pressure. And there are a lot of cards that Benjamin could have here to really punish him. Uh, any removal spell, a daze, even a brainstorm or ponder into one. Yeah, I think the reason... He's not going for the Thalia. I think he's going for the Abrupt Decay here, in which case, right. yeah, he doesn't have to play around the days. Interesting, interesting. It means he is going to eat a hit from the Geist of St. Traft, which is a little scary. Yeah, that certainly is a lot of damage. Uh, Abrupt Decay will take down the Insectile Aberration, but Wheeler's able to swing for the full six with Geist of St. Traft. That puts Dobaren down to just seven life. All right. 
What's the follow-up here from Benjamin? Well, he's got to keep the batter skull off the table. Yeah. Because if once the batter once if David gets even one batter skull hit in, that's going to make Ben's job a whole lot more, a whole lot harder. Yes. Looks like he has a submerge in his hand, so that's uh, one way to do it. You can actually wait until it's in play, submerge the germ. Pretty powerful. You can also uh, submerge the Stoneforge Mystic now. We actually have an update too. Burn's actually all down to four. There's another insectile aberration hit there. Yep. So things are a little tighter. That does mean that the uh, angel token from Geist of St. Traff is going to represent lethal, and this sort of feast and famine, protection from green and black, which uh, the germ token for Batter Skull is indeed black. So protection from all your dudes except for, you know, Stoneforge Mystic Chumping. All right. Tobrin has the option he can thought seize up his life total is so low that that's probably not something he can do right now. He needs to find a way to live through that angel token first of all. So he's going to start with Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. It looks like the birds is going to have to give herself up. I don't know why I gendered the birds female, yeah. but she is, <laughs> you know, the plumage, uh, I suppose, is feminine. I don't know. Mm. But she is going to have to give herself up if... Um, if David's going to want to survive this next attack. And he's in, Wheeler's going to go ahead and daze the Thalia. Just dazing for value here. He knows that David can't tap the birds to pay for the daze. And I think Wheeler's planning to submerge the birds of paradise. Yep. It appears that way. Just making sure that he can't do something like uh, land and have an abrupt decay in addition to the birds. Blocking through the Thalia. A heads up play, you know. No, not too often do we see a daze that doesn't actually uh, hard counter a spell, but it might as well have here because David is so choked. Yeah, and David didn't didn't even pay for the daze. Yep. May feel that he doesn't have uh, an option, uh, no say in the matter. Yeah, so David then passes the turn. It doesn't really matter when Wheeler goes for the submerge. Yep. It is a free spell. That is the, that is the beautiful beautiful part about Submerge. And there right. it is. That yeah. guy's very bad at surfing. We see a four and blue in the upper right hand corner. That is just a ruse. This spell is pretty much only boarded in in matchups where it's free. Yeah, yep. That's just to keep uh, Dark Confidant on decks in check. Is yeah, what that stop, number is for. Stop, <laughs> to stop counterbalance from ever countering it. You know, <laughs> things like that. So we see... Ponder cast and Doberman's going to respond to the ponder with batter skull. So what that actually means here is that he's safe from the he's would in theory be safe from the Geist of St. Traft because he could block and gain life off the Geist of St. Traft. As we know the submerge should end the game now so he yep. can submerge the germ token. Get your germ. And he just shows a submerge and we move on to a game three. That was a uh... ABC by Benjamin Wheeler's deck. That That is exactly what the Delver deck wants. You turn one Delver, flip it immediately, you know, deny you mana and kill your important guys and just clock you out and finish you off right before you're about to get back into the game. It treads, yeah. it, it treads that line beautifully, just like... <laughs> turn one's right. great and it's like, it's downhill from there and you just have to finish before you get yeah, too far yeah, downhill. Just close your eyes and put your foot on the gas and, you know, get them get them just before they uh, are able to turn it back around and stabilize. All right, so we're moving into game three. The die roll, always very important in these matchups. Yes, you know. especially with both decks packing mana denial packages. Right. Being on the play, the first onto the board and then being able to have your mana denial package be proactive rather than, you know, at parity or behind. Obviously, when you're behind on board, waste landing their third land is not exactly where you want to be. So... When he's on the draw, obviously the, the Delver deck is really trying to can't fall behind. It can fall behind in a lot of ways. Like, say David starts on turn one, Birds of Paradise, or turn one, Deathrite Shaman. Okay. You know, that's a really great start for the Maverick deck. Does Wheeler board, like, board Force of Wills in to try to stop that? Is there any, you know, that's obviously a part, the two for one is something you really don't want in this matchup. But it might it might be a necessary evil for. Well, uh, can he you know can he play fair and stop these you know stop these starts? Like, I think. 
I think that your answer to those starts to sort of retempo them is uh, either, like the ideal obviously is your own Delver and submerge their one draft. Yeah, that, that's that's great. That, so is, that is dreamland. If you can't do that, I think that it's very reasonable to just uh, source the Plow Stretch or Lightning Bolt, their mana guy, and then on the following turn, say, play another removal spell on a Delver or a Stoneforge Mystic and, you know, progress from there. But that, that does illustrate the value of being on the play versus the draw is if your turn one, uh, instead of being a Delver, has to be a Plow so you don't fall too far behind, that does not bode well for, you know, your turn two, three, four sequence. Yeah. Once, once you get out of that range, then then the game is at a sort of parity, and you can play straight up reasonably. But if you're if you're trying to tempo somebody out with Delvers, having to waste a turn um, killing a, a mana dork is not where you want to be. But given the option, if you have, so say your opponent starts on, you know, there's three one drops, Mother of Runes, Death Rite Shaman, and Birds of Paradise. When the Maverick player starts on one of those one drops... Mother dies on sight. Okay, Mother always has to get killed when you have the opportunity. Yes, Mother dies on sight for reasons that we saw in game one. Yeah. Now if he starts on a mana creature and Wheeler has the choice between kill spell and turn one Delver of his own... It depends a little on the texture of his hand, but I would lean towards Delver. It's okay. too important to get your clock out there. Alright, and we will see how this shapes up. We are on to game three. And it looks like Dobaron's on seven. Wheeler is contemplating. That now, is one thing about these Delver decks is that uh, they seem to mulligan quite a bit. You know, it's three colors. Your mana base is a little uh, strained with all these colored cards and wastelands. And he, Ooh, there's Mother. Public enemy number one yep. is pretty much is going to be Mother of Ruins here. Uh, Doburn plays it off. Actually, he plays it off a of Horizon Canopy. Um, that was the only land available, but it also has the added bonus that it can't get submerged here because he played it off Horizon yes, Canopy. Yes, he does not control a forest yet. So even if he had a savanna here, it's very possible that he would have made this play. Yes. Once once your mother is active, you can play you know as many forests as you want. It doesn't matter. But for this one turn where she's vulnerable, it is ideal to not have a forest yet. All right, so we're going to see Wheeler's response. It's almost certain that the Delver deck has a one drop. Uh, he goes Volcanic Island and does have the bolt for the Mother of Runes. He's got to be, you know, wiping sweat from his brow. And Mother right, is <laughs> not fun to play against if she gets active. Unfortunately for him, right off the top of the deck for Doburn was a second Mother of Runes. So he's going to have to have yet another kill spell. This is the stepmother of Runes. Aww. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, he does play the Forest, though, so he's... Submerge is a thing. All right. Now he's thinking about uh, whether he wants to run that mother out there or whether he wants to maybe play another removable creature. No, he does go for the mother first, and I think that that's sort of the default play. Unless you have a good reason to do something else, you want to you want to be uh, you know mother first. So interestingly, here he had the option to play both Quirion Ranger or Green Sun Zenith for one, and he chose to do neither. I think I like Quirion Ranger there. Um. I mean, if it gets dazed, you're not that upset about it. And if it doesn't, then, you know, you're you're better on board. Your mana is better for the next couple turns. Um, I think he was trying a little too hard to play around daze there when it actually would have been pretty profitable if uh, Benjamin spent his turn dazing, replaying his land, and then he has to have the one mana removal spell. He can't ponder into it. Yeah. Nonetheless, though, he does protect... If he has the man advantage, he can protect all his threats from days, which looks to be the line he's taking. Benjamin pondered that turn, looking for a kill spell for the Mother of Runes, but was unable to find one, so it looks like Mother's going to stick. And this combo, if you thought one Mother activation a turn was annoying, Ooh, Now boy. you get two of them. Creon Ranger is a one of in Doburn's deck, so it's a green sun target. But yeah, it's mostly there because it fav interacts really favorably with Mother of Runes and Knight of the Reliquary. It it has a couple cool applications, those being the main ones. Uh, another one is uh, extra death rate activations, as well as being able to uh, infinite chump block with the Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor actually being a forest and a creature, you can block, say, a giant Tormogoyf with that uh, Dryad Arbor, bounce it back to your hand, and then replay it, ready to do the same thing again next turn. 
All right, so speaking of that infinite chump blocker, we are going to see that play be made. David Greenson Zenitz for zero to get the Dryad Arbor into play. And it seems rather than making threats on the board, he's just pressing a mana advantage. Yep. Which, uh, you know, his all of his threats are pretty um, resilient. Anything that he plays after this, it pretty much has to be countered because once it hits the board, it's going to be ne near impossible to kill. And this is the, the spot where the Delver deck needs something pretty fantastic, like a engineered explosives for one, maybe? Engineered explosives for one seems very strong. <laughs> it's one of the few ways that he can deal with Mother of Runes and Quirion Ranger, and he has just that. That is actually a one-of in the sideboard of Benjamin Wheeler. These powerful, super powerful one-ofs uh, that you can dig to with Brainstorms and Ponders. Really high-impact cards for narrow situations. Really awesome way to build a deck in Legacy. Yeah, and so what once was looking like a difficult board state for, for Wheeler now looks pretty even. Both players with no permanence in play or no creature, no threats in play, unless you count the Dryad Arbor on Doburn's side. Mm, don't don't doubt the power of the Dryad Arbor. It's gonna swing for one. <laughs> uh, Doburn does have a good amount of threats now in his hand, though. He has a Knight of the Reliquary, a Scavenging Ooze, and he just drew a Batter Skull. Not the greatest job. But he's actually only one land away from activating it, which can be he can get there with the help of Knight of the Reliquary. Yep, absolutely. Hardcast uh, Batter Skull happens quite uh, quite often in this deck. Gonna save one life rather than deal one damage. Tapping the Dryad Arbor instead of the Horizon Canopy. And it is gonna be Force of Wills. So Benjamin Wheeler does have some amount of Force of Wills and Stifle in his deck on the draw post board. So uh, definitely an interesting take on the Cyborg plan. And that's what's really hard about playing against these Delver decks is you don't have, you have no idea what their configuration is. So you're saying they're so Stifle... Yeah, Stifle not always on when they're on the draw. Right. Stifle much better from the play. Often you still want them on the draw, but uh, there are a lot of players that subscribe to the board it out on the draw, board them in on the play. And it's interesting to see Benjamin Wheeler having them in, and the Force of Wills, also a, a card that many players board out in this matchup. Yeah, well, it looks like the Stifle was pretty dead here, so it was a, you know, it, it earned its worth in that it pitched to Force of Wills. Yes. And now we see Benjamin with a threat. He's going to make a Delver of Secrets here. Umazawa's GTA drawn from David. Yeah, that's going to be pretty important. He's going to lead on scavenging. His question is going to be whether or not he casts the GTA, but he does not. He's going to hit with Dryad Arbor. He's actually going to. He's going to know. He's going to put a put a counter on scavenging. Yeah, he's going to put the scavenging ooze to four four while Benjamin Wheeler's red mana is tapped out. All right, so he's, he's playing around Lightning Bolt. Yep, very heads up play. All right, so now Wheeler's going to either have to swords or submerge the scavenging ooze if he wants to get it off the board. Delver trigger. And an excellent, <laughs> lightning an bolt. excellent play for Joe Byrne that <laughs> to make this guy 4-4 four, four just in, in anticipation of a possible lightning bolt, which turned out to be there. Even he, if he saw the lightning bolt and then did it, Benjamin Wheeler could still brainstorm into the lightning bolt and kill the ooze. So David Joe Byrne, very heads up play and it pays off, but... So he does have here is Umazawa's GTA and cast, so that'll pose a pretty big problem. Both players with GTA. Wheeler's the first one with GTA though. And that is crucial, not only because it gets the first hit in, but also, ooh, I was going to say because you can deny the mana by killing Dryad Arbor, but Benjamin he's, Wheeler choosing not to do that, looking to pump and get David dead. Yeah, so with the, I think what he's, the plan he's on is that because he has the lightning bolts in his hand that, are, that aren't doing anything, he's going to just use the GTA to deal extra damage yep. and hopefully lightning bolt the rest of the way there. That does appear to be the plan. Now, by leaving Doburn the fourth mana, it does mean that Doburn can play and equip his own GTA. Remember, with the Legend rule now, this is not going to remove Wheeler's GTA. No, these are two parallel universes. This is this is the same GTA in a you know alternate timeline. All right, so a hit of four for Benjamin we for David Doburn puts Wheeler down to twelve. So. What that looks like is that now we, you know, if if Wheeler wants to pump, Doburn can gain the life back. So pushing extra damage with the GTA no longer an option. But Wheeler's gonna have to be careful to keep counters on his GTA because otherwise Doburn's GTA will kill the insectile aberration. Absolutely. And now it's time to start grinding. <laughs> yeah. This is this is very interesting. I think this is a new, pretty, fairly at least for me, a new board state. Yes. I haven't seen dueling GTAs yet. Can you imagine Kamigawa block? 
constructed. It would have been even harder to remove him without his GTA, and the car was already obscene. So that would have that would have been a thing. I think Benjamin Wheeler getting punished a little bit for not killing Dryad Arbor. I agree. Time. I I, th I thought that that was going to be you know the knee jerk reaction, the uh, sort of default play, but Benjamin Wheeler choosing to go with the more aggressive line, trying to get him dead. All right, and he's going to go ahead and play Wasteland. Well, he opts to Wasteland the Bayou to get David off of black mana. I think he's trying to make sure that Abrupt Decay is not cast on his own GT. Correct. Losing your own GT here would be basically game over and uh, Benjamin Wheeler recognizing that, taking out the black, giving himself at least a couple more turns uh, even if David does draw the Abrupt Decay. Alright, Scavenging is looking at the graveyard seeing if there's more food there. I do not... I don't know if there's another creature in Wheeler's yard for him. For the turn to burn Drew a fetch land, which would have been enough to hard cast a batter skull a turn ago, but right now is not going to do it because right. of thanks to Wasteland. So, an interesting game state. You know, Geist of St. Traft is. hits about as hard as a scavenging ooze. You know, I would say those are near equivalent. And then we have an insectile apparition racing, but not really. And so how possible is it for Joe Byrne to go on the defensive here? It looks like if he goes on the offensive, he's going to lose the race, especially because Wheeler's deck plays Lightning Bolts. Correct. The question is whether he can realistically start defending. I don't think he can because the Insectile Aberration continues to accumulate counters on Umzawa's Jite, and if uh, David Joe Byrne's not attacking with his Scavenging Ooze and... He'll fall behind in the Jite yeah, race? Yeah, he, he'll fall behind on Jite counters, and there will be... Uh, Extreme difficulties from there. Speaking of extreme difficulties, looks like we're uh, tanking a little on, you know, figuring out how to how to calculate this race. Like you said, this is a very unique game plan. Well, yeah, the idea, game stage, the idea of response, yeah, having a, there's a ton of GTA counters on both sides. Remember, there's there's three modes on GTA, so. We'll, there's so many different options that each player yeah, has. Yeah, the decision trees are just outrageous, and all of the creatures have these weird abilities also, like flying, make another dude, then the scavenging ooze has, you know, its ability. Dry Arbor is a mana guy. Yeah, I still wonder when Ben's going to pull the trigger and if he ever is ever going to pull the trigger to go to take care of that Dryad Arbor. Yeah, I mean, I recognize that it's basically a break-even thing exchange because the scavenging news then gets to eat the dried arbor and grow by one anyway but the mana denial is actually a real thing especially with horizon canopy being in play if you can choke his mana you make it less attractive to draw that extra card off of the horizon canopy and even if he does choose to cash it in you know he's going to have more difficulty utilizing that extra card if he's uh more choked on mana i certainly would have taken out the dried arbor uh a while ago but instead he's going to accumulate some counters on the things i Probably try and get David dead. All right, so here's the swing from Scavenging News. It's 4 4. No profitable blocks for Wheeler. No. Yeah, it's interesting. When you have two GTAs, it almost seems like the minus one, minus one ability on it becomes the worst ability. <laughs> yeah, because the other ones uh, have double the effect. Right. So now it's Benjamin Wheeler's turn to do some math. Yeah, so he can take this if he wants to. Yeah. And I think he's going to come to the conclusion that that's what he needs to do. Yep. yep. So he takes four off the scavenging ooze. He goes down to seven. Now both GTAs are at parity with four counters apiece. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So he's actually representing lethal here. Benjamin Wheeler is. And it looks like that last card in Joe Burns' hand is Elspeth Knight Errant. That's not going to cut it here. So this Dried Arbor is going to have to give himself up. As with that Lightning Bolt, even through the 8 life from Umzao's Jite, this is, uh, this is 18 damage on, if unblocked. Well, the way you can count is you can just assume that both, all the Jite counters cancel each yes, other Yes, they out. equalize. So it is... Three, four, five, plus four for the angel, plus the lightning bolt, right? Yes. So it's actually two over. So 
the Dryad Arbor blocking the guys of Sitting Trap isn't even enough. No, it's that. No, he should have lethal here. He has to just make sure that he makes the swing. We'll see here. So Wheeler just putting it together himself, making sure that he that he also agrees he has lethal. Yeah. He's gonna go, it looks like he's going to move the GTA to Geist of St. Traps. That Certainly could, a mistake. That could take away the lethal swing as it allows a chump block from Dryad Arbor. Yeah, that, that is a massive go. blunder. Well, that should be fine since Dryad Arbor is gone now. It, 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 it's still okay. If... This is not... Okay, it's still lethal then, right? It is still lethal thanks to the Angel token. No, now it's one he's gonna short. Eat. He's going to eat. So DeBrin goes up to 11. He gains two more. That'll be 13. With the unblocked creatures, he takes nine. He he has one extra. Yeah, I believe he will only go to one. Right. Yeah, it, it does appear that he will be six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, DeBrin also can eat the, the Dryad Arbor. With scavenging ooze. Yeah, I don't believe that because of that GTA move, I don't believe that Benjamin Wheeler has enough damage anymore. Yeah, and now the insect insectile apparition is gonna be vulnerable to GTA to next turn's GTA counters. Yeah, and Doburn is in seems very in control of this situation. Yeah, he he did the math but last turn. The tra guy saying trapped is now an 8-8. So burn burning his counters to gain life here. Gaining just enough life to make this attack not lethal. So right now the attack is for is for exactly 15. So Doburn's gonna have to use either one more counter or a scavenging use activation. Four, six, seven, 15. He's gonna go ahead. GTA yeah. pumps three times. You're right. So yeah. this is for exactly 15. 15. He's gonna go ahead and eat Knight of the Reliquary, I believe. He ate something. He ate something, yes. He ate another creature. So he has one more left in Dryad Arbor. But that'll put him up to 16. This attack will only bring him down to one. He can actually use these last two counters to kill the Insectile Apparition right now. Yeah, I'm not sure that he needs to do that. The thing is, is actually, if he does use them that, use them that way, he will die to Lightning Bolt. Right, and he so, knows about the Lightning Bolt, too. Right, he knows about the Lightning Bolt. So I think he needs to save those... Yeah, he needs to save that. All right, well, that's break even. Horizon Canopy tapping, losing a life, and then gaining it back with the Scavenging News. So Scavenging News now a 7 7. Yeah, Doburn can, and I think the graveyard's now empty of creatures. Doburn does have a 7 7. So he's going to have to use these counters to gain life, right? In response, yeah. He, what he wants to make sure is that his swing back is lethal, and thanks to that tap on Horizon Canopy, it is lethal. So Doburn takes damage, he will go down to 1. But the two counters, sorry, the two counters that the GTA just got may be enough to keep Wheeler alive on this attack. Right, because both of these counters, uh, both of, well, oh, actually only one counter needs to gain life necessarily because he's gonna, David Dilburn's gonna have a painless green once he untaps. But there's not a creature There's no left. more creatures left. So it may be, had he not, I'm not sure, the, him using that horizon canopy maybe like did cost him two damage by using by using the horizon canopy on the dry arbor as opposed to doing it this turn all right looks like gain a life pump pump bolt you and he sees the line that'll do it so wow. benjamin wheeler defeats david doburn two games to one in a really tight game and moves to 3-0 with blue white red delver gt math gt versus gt math Pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not your not your everyday magic. Yeah, even if Doburn makes the play where he you takes the make the green painless to get rid of the dryad arbor, he's still gonna be short some damage. Right. I mean he has to trade all the GTA counters. Well he floated the green from the dryad arbor and used that, so that was good. And then yep. he used his other non pain green, the bayou. So instead of using the canopy, I guess he could have fetched, and then when he untaps, he has one more activation, but there's no creatures There's no more left. creatures, so that doesn't really make a difference.